St. Patrick's Oratory has been known in Green Bay as the Irish Church. This video will show both its history and its newly restored interior. The story of this church starts in Ireland. In the early 19th century, rural Irish Catholics were an impoverished people, almost entirely subsisting on the potato. And while they at first had little impulse to leave their traditional homeland for America, this drastically changed in 1845 when the potato blight reached Ireland. For the next seven years, a visible airborne fungus turned their staple crop into a rotting poison, causing one million out of eight million Irish to die of starvation and disease. One million more left for the United States, selling what little they had that was valuable enough to get them a ride over. The Irish first went to the cities of the eastern seaboard, finding hard, labor-intensive jobs. Working their way west, digging canals and laying railroads, many settled in the railroad hub of Milwaukee, and a few took the final ride north to Green Bay. Irish settlement there swelled when many came to work for the first railroad of the Green Bay area at what was then Green Bay's sister city of Fort Howard. Those moving from Ireland to Wisconsin would have taken comfort in the general similarities between the two landscapes. But to truly make Green Bay their home, they would need their own church. Other Catholic churches in Green Bay were each dominated by other nationalities, such as the French Church of St. John's and the German Church of St. Mary's. So in 1866, the Irish of both sides of the river put aside their civic rivalry to build their first church, where the present church stands today. The new church was dedicated to the favorite saint of Ireland, St. Patrick, one of history's most successful missionaries who transformed fifth century Ireland from deeply pagan to intensely Christian. In 1873, the church acquired from Germany an excellent statue of St. Patrick, which still stands prominently in the sanctuary. The new church was active in the community, getting involved in charities and in the temperance movement. The St. Patrick's Total Abstinence Society called people to avoid liquor consumption challenging the notion of wild, drunken Irishmen. Despite these successes, the 1880s was a low point for the parish. The building was becoming run down, and people were complaining that the art was tasteless, the finances were being mismanaged, and that the pews were uncomfortable. And so much of the congregation exited for the way cooler churches across the river. Just then, a charismatic new priest came to St. Patrick's and it was exactly what the parish needed. Father O'Brien reinvigorated the parish. Seeing its finances turned around and using his Irish energy, as it was called at the time, to lead the charge in raising a new building, the present Gothic church. Pictures suggest an amazing original interior, which recent work has magnificently restored to its historical splendor. Presented as a new home for Green Bay's Irish, the scattered Irish families came back. Under Father O'Brien's leadership, the parish even pulled off building a St. Patrick's School located just behind the church.
When it was first built in 1894, the church was hailed as being one of the finest in this part of the state. But as decades passed, the building slowly degraded. Lightning wrecked the steeple, and the school became a parking lot. The interior was even whitewashed in an attempt to modernize. Then, in the 1980s and 90s, a movement began to revitalize the old church, again led by Father O'Brien. Not because he's an immortal Irish fairy, it was a second one. A new spire was added, donated by a parishioner. They moved a giant pipe organ, revealing the light of the large rose window, which they rejuvenated, along with every other stained glass window in the church. And finally, after coming under the leadership of the Institute of Christ the King, a new restoration project culminated in the exhaustive painting of the interior. The color palette, based on the existing floor, includes a soft green, further upholding its Irish origins. Although the demographics have shifted, the parish is currently vibrant, led by the Institute of Christ the King, a society which celebrates the traditional Latin Mass giving St. Patrick's parishioners yet another connection to the beauty of their past. The restoration work helps fulfill a mission of the Institute to use beauty to attract human senses to the things above. And it shows that the original Irish of Green Bay created something that later generations saw value in continuing. If you enjoyed this video, help it out by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. See you in the next one.